And now chapter 22 of the Madhya The Process of Devotional Service. I offer my respectful obeisances unto Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He has an ocean of transcendental mercy, and although the subject matter of Bhakti Yoga is very confidential, he has nonetheless manifested it so nicely, even in this age of Kali, the age of quarrel. All glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to Nityananda Prabhu. All glories to Advaita Chandra. All glories to all the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I have described one's relation with Krishna in various ways. This is the subject matter of all the Vedas. Krishna is the center of all activities. Now I shall speak about the characteristics of devotional service by which one can attain the shelter of Krishna and his loving, transcendental service. A human being's activities should be centered only about devotional service to Lord Krishna. That is the verdict of all Vedic literatures, and all saintly people have ascertained this. Great sages have said to the Lord, When the mother Vedas, or Shruti, is questioned as to whom to worship, she says that you are the only Lord and worshipable object. Similarly, the corollaries of the Shruti Shastras, the Smriti Shastras, give the same instructions, just like sisters. The Puranas, which are like brothers, Follow in the footsteps of their mother. O enemy of the demon Mura, the conclusion is that you are the only shelter. Now I have understood this in truth. Again, speaking to Sanatan Goswami, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Krishna is the non-dual absolute truth, the supreme personality of Godhead. Although he is one, he maintains different personal expansions and energies for his pastimes. Krishna expands himself in many forms. Some of them are personal expansions, and some are separate expansions. Thus he performs pastimes in both the spiritual and material worlds. The spiritual worlds are the Vaikuntha planets and the material universes are Brahmandas, gigantic globes governed by Lord Brahma. Expansions of his personal self, like the quadruple manifestations of Sankarshan, Pradyumna, Aniruddha, and Vasudev, descend as incarnations from Vaikuntha to this material world. The separated expansions are living entities. Although they are expansions of Krishna, they are counted among his different potencies. The living entities, or jivas, are divided into two categories. Some are eternally liberated, and others are eternally conditioned. Those who are eternally liberated are always awake to Krishna consciousness, and they render transcendental loving service at the feet of Lord Krishna. They are to be considered eternal associates of Krishna, 
and they are eternally enjoying the transcendental bliss of serving Krishna. Apart from the ever-liberated devotees, there are the conditioned souls who always turn away from the service of the Lord. They are perpetually conditioned in this material world and are subjected to the material tribulations brought about by different bodily forms in hellish conditions. Due to his being opposed to Krishna consciousness, the conditioned soul is punished by the witch of the external energy, Maya. He is thus ready to suffer the threefold miseries miseries brought about by the body and mind, the inimical behavior of other living entities, and natural disturbances caused by the demigods. In this way the conditioned soul becomes the servant of lusty desires, and when these are not fulfilled he becomes a servant of anger and continues to be kicked by the external energy, Maya. Wandering and wandering throughout the universe, he may by chance get the association of a devotee physician, whose instructions and hymns make the witch of external energy flee. The conditioned soul thus gets into touch with the devotional service of Lord Krishna, and in this way he can approach nearer and nearer to the Lord. O oh my Lord! There is no limit to the unwanted orders of lusty desires. Although I have rendered them so much service, they have not shown any mercy to me. I have not been ashamed to serve them, nor have I even desired to give them up. O oh my Lord, O oh head of the Yadu dynasty, recently, however, my intelligence has been awakened, and now I am giving them up. Due to transcendental intelligence, I now refuse to obey the unwanted orders of these desires, and I now come to you to surrender myself at your fearless lotus feet. Kindly engage me in your personal service and save me. Devotional service to Krishna is the chief function of the living entity. There are different methods for the liberation of the conditioned soul, karma, jnana, yoga, and bhakti, but all are dependent on bhakti. But for devotional service, all other methods for spiritual self-realization are weak and insignificant. Unless one comes to the devotional service of Lord Krishna, jnana and yoga cannot give the desired results. When pure knowledge is beyond all material affinity, but is not dedicated to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, it does not appear very beautiful, although it is knowledge without a material tinge. What then is the use of fruitive activities, which are naturally painful from the beginning and transient by nature, if they are not utilized for the devotional service of the Lord? How can they be very attractive? Those who perform severe austerities and penances, those who give away all their possessions out of charity, those who are very famous for their auspicious activity, those who are engaged in meditation and mental speculation, and even those who are very expert in reciting the Vedic mantras, are not able to obtain any auspicious results, although they are engaged in auspicious activities, if they do not dedicate their activities to the service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. I therefore repeatedly offer my respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whose glories are always auspicious. Speculative knowledge alone, without devotional service, is not able to give liberation. On the other hand, even without knowledge, 
one can obtain liberation if one engages in the Lord's devotional service. My dear Lord, devotional service unto you is the only auspicious path. If one gives it up simply for speculative knowledge, or the understanding that these living beings are spirit souls and the material world is false, he undergoes a great deal of trouble. He only gains troublesome and inauspicious activities. His endeavors are like beating a husk that is already devoid of rice. One's labor becomes fruitless. As Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, this divine energy of mine, consisting of the three modes of material nature, is difficult to overcome. But those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it. The living entity is bound around the neck by the chain of Maya because he has forgotten that he is eternally a servant of Krishna. If the conditioned soul engages in the service of the Lord and simultaneously carries out the orders of his spiritual master and serves him, he can get out of the clutches of Maya and become eligible for shelter at Krishna's lotus feet. The followers of the Varnashram institution accept the regulative principles of the four social orders, Brahman, Kshatriya, Vaishya, and Shudra, and four spiritual orders, Brahmacharya, Grahasta, Varnaprastha, and Sannyas. However, if one carries out the regulative principles of these orders, but does not render transcendental service to Krishna, he falls into the hellish condition of material life. From the mouth of Brahma, the Brahminical order has come into existence. Similarly, from his arms, the Kshatriyas have come. From his waist, the Vaishyas have come. And from his legs, the Shudras have come. These four orders and their spiritual counterparts, Brahmacharya, Grahasta, Varnaprastha, and Sannyas, combine to make human society complete. If one simply maintains an official position in the four Varnas and Ashrams, but does not worship the Supreme Lord Vishnu, he falls down from his puffed-up position into a hellish condition. There are many philosophical speculators or jnanis belonging to the Mayavad school who consider themselves liberated and call themselves Narayan. However, their intelligence is not purified unless they engage in Krishna's devotional service. As mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam, O Lotus-eyed One, those who think they are liberated in this life but do not render devotional service to you must be of impure intelligence. Although they accept severe austerities and penances, and rise to the spiritual position to impersonal Brahman realization, they fall down again because they neglect to worship your lotus feet. Krishna is compared to sunshine, and Maya is compared to darkness. Wherever there is sunshine, there cannot be darkness. As soon as one takes to Krishna consciousness, the darkness of illusion, the influence of the external energy, will immediately vanish. The external illusory energy of Krishna, known as Maya, is always ashamed to stand in front of Krishna, just as darkness is ashamed to remain before the sunshine. However, that Maya bewilders unfortunate people who have no intelligence. Thus they simply boast that this material world is theirs and that they are its enjoyers. One is immediately freed from the clutches of Maya if he seriously and sincerely says, 
my dear Lord Krishna, although I have forgotten you for so many long years in the material world, today I am surrendering unto you. I am your sincere and serious servant. Please engage me in your service. Lord Ramachandra says in the Ramayan, It is my vow that if one only once seriously surrenders unto me, saying, My dear Lord, from this day I am yours, and praise to me for courage, I shall immediately award courage to that person, and he will always remain safe from that time on. Due to bad association, the living entity desires material happiness, liberation, or merging into the impersonal aspect of the Lord, or he engages in mystic yoga for material power. If such a person actually becomes intelligent, he takes to Krishna consciousness by engaging himself in intense devotional service to Lord Sri Krishna. Whether one desires everything or nothing, or whether he desires to merge into the existence of the Lord, he is intelligent only if he worships Lord Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, by rendering transcendental loving service. If those who desire material enjoyment or merging into the existence of the Absolute Truth engage in the Lord's transcendental loving service, they will immediately attain shelter at Krishna's lotus feet. Although they did not ask for it, Krishna is therefore very merciful. Krishna says, If one engages in my transcendental loving service, but at the same time wants the opulence of material enjoyment, he is very very foolish. Indeed, he is just like a person who gives up ambrosia to drink poison. Since I am very intelligent, why should I give this fool material prosperity? Instead, I shall induce him to take the nectar of the shelter of my lotus feet and make him forget illusory material enjoyment. Whenever Krishna is requested to fulfill one's desire, he undoubtedly does so, but he does not award anything which, after being enjoyed, will cause someone to petition him again and again to fulfill further desires. When one has other desires but engages in the Lord's service, Krishna forcibly gives one shelter at his lotus feet where one will forget all other desires. When someone engages in Lord Krishna's devotional service for the satisfaction of the senses and instead acquires a taste to serve Krishna, he gives up his material desires and willingly offers himself as an eternal servant of Krishna. When he was being benedicted by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Dhruva Maharaj said, O oh my Lord, because I was seeking an opulent material position, I was performing severe types of penance and austerity. Now I have gotten you, who are very difficult for the great demigods, saintly persons, and kings to attain. I was searching after a piece of glass, but instead I have found a most valuable jewel. Therefore I am so satisfied that I do not wish to ask any benediction from you. There are unlimited conditioned souls who are bereft of Lord Krishna's service. Not knowing how to cross the ocean of nations, they are scattered by waves of time and tide. However, some are fortunate to contact devotees, and by this contact 
they are delivered from the ocean of nations, just as a log floating down a river accidentally washes upon the bank. As mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam, because I am so fallen, I shall never get a chance to see the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This was my false apprehension. Rather by chance, a person as fallen as I am may get to see the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Although one is being carried away by the waves of the river of time, one may eventually reach the shore. By good fortune, one becomes eligible to cross the ocean of nations, and when one's term of material existence decreases, one may get an opportunity to associate with pure devotees. By such association, one's attraction to Krishna is awakened. As mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam, O my Lord, O infallible Supreme Person, when a person wandering throughout the universes becomes eligible for liberation from material existence, he gets an opportunity to associate with devotees. When he associates with devotees, his attraction for you is awakened. You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the highest goal of the Supreme Devotees and the Lord of the Universe. Krishna is situated in everyone's heart as Chaitya Guru, the spiritual master within. When he is kind to some fortunate conditioned soul, he personally gives one lessons to progress in devotional service, instructing the person as the super-soul within and the spiritual master without. O oh my Lord, transcendental poets and experts in spiritual science could not fully express their indebtedness to you, even if they were endowed with the prolonged lifetime of Brahma. For you appear in two features, externally as the Acharya and internally as the Supersoul, to deliver the embodied living being by directing him how to come to you. By associating with a devotee, one awakens his faith in devotional service to Krishna. Because of devotional service, one's dormant love for Krishna awakens, and thus one's material, conditional existence comes to an end. Somehow or other, if one is attracted to talks about me, and has faith in the instructions I have set forth in Bhagavad Gita, and if one is actually detached from material things and material existence, his dormant love for me will be awakened by devotional service. Unless one is favored by a pure devotee, he cannot attain the platform of devotional service. To say nothing of Krishna Bhakti, one cannot even be relieved from the bondage of material existence. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, Bharat Maharaj says to King Rahugana, O King Rahugana, without taking upon one's head the dust from the lotus feet of a pure devotee, a Mahajan or Mahatma, one cannot attain devotional service. Devotional service is not possible to attain simply by undergoing severe austerities and penances by gorgeously worshipping the deity, or by strictly following the rules and regulations of the sannyas or grahasta order, nor by studying the Vedas, submerging oneself in water, or exposing oneself to fire or scorching sunlight. Unless human society accepts the dust of the lotus feet of great Mahatmas, devotees who have nothing to do with material possessions, mankind cannot turn its attention to the lotus feet of Krishna. 
those lotus feet vanquish all the unwanted, miserable conditions of material life. The verdict of all revealed scriptures is that by even a moment's association with a pure devotee, one can attain all success. The value of a moment's association with a devotee of the Lord cannot even be compared to the attainment of heavenly planets or liberation from matter and what to speak of worldly benedictions in the form of material prosperity which is for those who are meant for death. Krishna is so merciful that simply by aiming his instructions at Arjun, he has given protection to the whole world. He said to him, Because you are my very dear friend, I am speaking to you the most confidential part of knowledge. Hear this from me, for it is for your benefit. Always think of me and become my devotee. Worship me and offer obeisances unto me. Thus you will come to me without fail. I promise you this because you are my very dear friend. Although Krishna has previously explained the proficiency of executing Vedic rituals, performing fluid of activities as enjoined in the Vedas, practicing yoga and cultivating jnana, these last instructions are most powerful and stand above all the others. If the devotee has faith in the strength of this order, he worships Lord Krishna and gives up all other activities. As long as one is not satiated by fruitive activity and has not awakened his taste for devotional service by Shravanam Kirtanam Vishnu, one has to act according to the regulative principles of the Vedic injunctions. By rendering transcendental loving service to Krishna, one automatically performs all subsidiary activities. This confident, firm faith favorable to the discharge of devotional service is called Shraddha. By pouring water on the root of a tree, one automatically satisfies the trunk, branches and twigs. Similarly, by supplying food to the stomach where it nourishes the life air, one satisfies all the senses. In the same way, by worshipping Krishna and rendering Him service, one automatically satisfies all the demigods. A faithful devotee is a truly eligible candidate for the loving service of the Lord. According to one's faith, one is classified as a topmost devotee, an intermediate devotee, or an inferior devotee. One who is expert in logic, argument and the revealed scriptures and who has firm faith in Krishna is classified as a topmost devotee. He can deliver the whole world. One who is expert in logic and understanding of revealed scriptures and who always has firm conviction and deep faith that is not blind is to be considered a topmost devotee in devotional service. One who is not very expert in argument and logic based on revealed scriptures, but who has firm faith, is considered a second-class devotee. He also must be considered most fortunate. He who does not know scriptural argument very well, but who has firm faith, is called an intermediate or second-class devotee. One whose faith is soft, and pliable is called a neophyte, but by gradually following the process he will rise to the platform of a first-class devotee. One whose faith is not very strong, 
but who is just beginning should be considered a neophyte devotee. A devotee is considered superlative and superior according to his attachment and love. In the eleventh canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, the following symptoms have been ascertained. A person advanced in devotional service sees within everything the soul of souls, the supreme personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. Consequently, he always sees the form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead as the cause of all causes and understands that all things are situated in him. An intermediate second-class devotee shows love for the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is friendly to all devotees, and is very merciful to neophytes and ignorant people. The intermediate devotee neglects those who are envious of devotional service. A prakrita or materialistic devotee does not purposefully study the Shastra and try to understand the actual standard of pure devotional service. Consequently, he does not show proper respect to advanced devotees. He may, however, follow the regulative principles learned from his spiritual master or from his family who worships the deity. He is to be considered on the material platform, although he is trying to advance in devotional service. Such a person is a Bhakta Praya, a neophyte devotee, or Bhakta Bas, for he is a little enlightened by Vaishnav philosophy. A Vaishnav is one who has developed all good transcendental qualities. All the good qualities of Krishna gradually develop in Krishna's devotee. In one who has unflinching devotional faith in Krishna, all the good qualities of Krishna and the demigods are consistently manifest. However, he who has no devotion to the Supreme Personality of Godhead has no good qualifications because he is engaged by mental concoction in material existence, which is the external feature of the Lord. All these transcendental qualities are the characteristics of pure Vaishnavs, and they cannot be fully explained, but I shall try to point out some of the important qualities. Devotees are always merciful humble, truthful, equal to all, faultless, magnanimous, mild, and clean. They are without material possessions, and they perform welfare work for everyone. They are peaceful, surrendered to Krishna, and desireless. They are indifferent to material acquisitions, and are fixed in devotional service. They completely control the six bad qualities, such as lust, anger, greed, and so forth. They eat only as much as required, and they are not inebriated. They are respectful, grave, compassionate, and without false prestige. They are friendly, poetic, expert, and silent. Devotees are always tolerant, forbearing, and very merciful. They are the well-wishers of every living entity. They follow the scriptural injunctions, and because they have no enemies, they are very peaceful. These are the decorations of devotees. It is the verdict of all Shastras and great personalities that by serving a pure devotee, one attains the path of liberation. However, by associating with materialistic people who are attached to material enjoyment and women, one attains the path of darkness. Those who are actually devotees are broad-minded, equal to everyone, and very peaceful. They never become angry, and they are friendly to all living entities. 
The root cause of devotional service to Lord Krishna is association with advanced devotees. Even when one's dormant love for Krishna awakens, association with devotees is still most essential. As mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam, O my Lord, O infallible Supreme Person, when a person wandering throughout the universes becomes eligible for liberation from material existence, he gets an opportunity to associate with devotees. When he associates with devotees, his attraction for you is awakened. You are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the highest goal of the Supreme Devotees, and the Lord of the Universe. O devotees, O you who are free from all sins, let me inquire from you about that which is supremely auspicious for all living entities. Association with a pure devotee for even half a moment in this material world is the greatest treasure for human society. The spiritually powerful message of Godhead can be properly discussed only in a society of devotees, and it is greatly pleasing to hear in that association. If one hears from devotees, the way of transcendental experience quickly opens and gradually one attains firm faith that in due course develops into attraction and devotion. A Vaishnav should always avoid the association of ordinary people. Common people are very much materially attached, especially to women. Vaishnavs should also avoid the company of those who are not devotees of Lord Krishna. By association with worldly people, one becomes devoid of truthfulness, cleanliness, mercy, gravity, spiritual intelligence, shyness, austerity, fame, forgiveness, control of the mind, control of the senses, fortune, and all opportunities. One should not at any time associate with a coarse fool who is bereft of the knowledge of self-realization and who is no more than a toy animal in the hands of a woman. The illusion and bondage that accrue to a man from attachment to any other object are not as complete as that resulting from association with a woman or with men too attached to women. It is better to accept the miseries of being encaged with bars and surrounded by burning flames than to associate with those bereft of Krishna consciousness. Such association is a very great hardship. One should not even see those who are bereft of devotional service in Krishna consciousness and who are therefore devoid of pious activities. Without hesitation, one should take the exclusive shelter of Lord Krishna with full confidence, giving up bad association and even neglecting the regulative principles of the four varnas and four ashrams. That is to say, one should abandon all material attachment. As Lord Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, after giving up all kinds of religious and occupational duties, if you come to me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and take shelter, I shall give you protection from all of life's sinful reactions. Do not worry. Lord Krishna is very kind to his devotees. He is always very grateful and magnanimous, and he possesses all abilities. A learned man does not give up Krishna to worship anyone else. In the Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, My dear Lord, you are very affectionate to your devotees. You are also a truthful and grateful friend. Where is that learned man who would give you up and surrender to someone else? You fulfill all the desires of your devotees, so much so that sometimes you even give yourself to them. Still, you neither increase 
nor decrease by such activity. Whenever an experienced person develops real knowledge of Krishna and his transcendental qualities, he naturally gives up all other engagements and renders service to the Lord. Uddhava gives evidence concerning this. As mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Oh, how wonderful it is! Putana, the sister of Bakasura, wanted to kill Krishna by smearing deadly poison on her breasts and having Krishna take it. Nonetheless, Lord Krishna accepted her as his mother, and thus she attained the destination befitting Krishna's mother. Of whom should I take shelter but Krishna, who is most merciful? There are two kinds of devotees, those who are fully satiated and free from all material desires, and those who are fully surrendered to the lotus feet of the Lord. Their qualities are one and the same, but those who are fully surrendered to Krishna's lotus feet are qualified with another transcendental quality, Atma Samarpan, full surrender without reservation. The six divisions of surrender are the acceptance of those things favorable to devotional service, the rejection of unfavorable things, the conviction that Krishna will give protection, the acceptance of the Lord as one's guardian or master, and full self-surrender and humility. One whose body is fully surrendered takes shelter at the holy place where Krishna had his pastimes, and he prays to the Lord, My Lord, I am yours. Understanding this with his mind, he enjoys spiritual bliss. When a devotee thus fully surrenders unto Krishna's lotus feet, Krishna accepts him as one of his confidential associates. As mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam, the living entity who is subjected to birth and death attains immortality when he gives up all material activities, dedicates his life to the execution of my order, and acts according to my directions. In this way he becomes fit to enjoy the spiritual bliss derived from exchanging loving mellows with me. My dear Sanatan, please now hear about the regulative principles for the execution of devotional service. By this process, one can attain the highest perfection of love of Godhead, which is the most desirable treasure. When transcendental devotional service, by which love for Krishna is attained, is executed by the senses, it is called sadhana bhakti, or the regulative discharge of devotional service. Such devotion eternally exists within the heart of every living entity. The awakening of this eternal devotion is the potentiality of devotional service in practice. The spiritual activities of hearing, chanting, remembering, and so forth are the natural characteristics of devotional service. The marginal characteristic is that it awakens pure love for Krishna. Pure love for Krishna is eternally established in the hearts of living entities. It is not something to be gained from another source. When the heart is purified by hearing and chanting, the living entity naturally awakens. There are two processes of practical devotional service. One is regulative devotional service, and the other is spontaneous devotional service. Those who have not attained the platform of spontaneous attachment in devotional service render devotional service under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master according to the regulative principles mentioned in the revealed scriptures. According to the revealed scriptures, this kind of devotional service is called Bhaiti Bhakti. In the Srimad Bhagavatam it is said, O descendant of Bharat, O Maharaj Pariksit, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is situated in everyone's heart as Paramatma, who is the Supreme Controller, and who always removes the miseries of living entities, 
must always be heard about from reliable sources, and he must be glorified and remembered by one who wishes to become fearless. From the mouth of Brahma, the Brahminical order has come into existence. Similarly, from his arms, the Kshatriyas have come. From his waist, the Vaishyas have come. And from his legs, the Shudras have come. These four orders and their spiritual counterparts, Brahmacharya, Grahastha, Vanaprastha, and Sannyas, combine to make human society complete. If one simply maintains an official position in the four Vanas and Ashrams, but does not worship the Supreme Lord Vishnu, he falls down from his puffed-up position into a hellish condition. Krishna is the origin of Lord Vishnu. He should always be remembered and never forgotten at any time. All the rules and prohibitions mentioned in the Shastras should be the servants of these two principles. I shall say something about the various practices of devotional service, which is expanded in so many ways. I wish to speak briefly of the essential practices. On the path of the regulative devotional service, one must observe the following items. 1. One must accept a bona fide spiritual master. 2. Accept initiation from him. 3. Serve him. 4. Receive instructions from the spiritual master and make inquiries in order to learn devotional service. 5. Follow in the footsteps of the previous acharyas and follow the directions given by the spiritual master. The next steps are as follows. 6. One should be prepared to give up everything for Krishna's satisfaction. And one should also accept everything for Krishna's satisfaction. 7. One must live in a place where Krishna is present, a city like Vrindavan or Mathura or a Krishna temple. One should acquire a livelihood that is just sufficient to keep body and soul together. One must fast on a Kadasi day. One should worship Dhatri trees, Bunyan trees, cows, Brahmins and devotees of Lord Vishnu. One should avoid offenses against devotional service and the holy name. The twelfth item is to give up the company of non-devotees. Thirteen, one should not accept an unlimited number of disciples. Fourteen, one should not partially study many scriptures just to be able to give references and expand explanations. Fifteen, the devotee should treat loss and gain equally. 16. The devotee should not be overwhelmed by lamentation. 17. The devotee should not worship demigods, nor should he disrespect them. Similarly, the devotee should not study or criticize other scriptures. 18. The devotee should not hear Lord Vishnu or his devotees blasphemed. 19. The devotee should avoid reading or hearing newspapers or mundane books that contain stories of love affairs between men and women, or subjects palatable to the senses. 20. Neither by mind nor words should the devotee cause anxiety to any living entity, regardless how insignificant he may be. After one is established in devotional service, the positive actions are 1. Hearing 2. Chanting 3. Remembering, 4. Worshipping, 5. Praying, 6. Serving, 7. Accepting servitorship, 8. Becoming a friend, and 9. Surrendering fully. One should also 10. Dance before the deity, 11. Sing before the deity, 12. Open one's mind to the deity, 13. Offer obeisances to the deity, 14. Stand up before the deity and the spiritual master, just to show them respect. 15. Follow the deity or the spiritual master. 
and 16 visit different places of pilgrimage or go see the deity in the temple. One should, 17, circumambulate the temple, 18, recite various prayers, 19, chant softly, 20, chant congregationally, 21, smell the incense and flower garlands offered to the deity, and 22, eat the remnants of food offered to the deity. One should, 23, attend arti and festivals. 24. See the deity. 25. Present what is very dear to oneself to the deity. 26. Meditate. And 27. Serve those related to the Lord, such as Tulsi. 28. Is to serve the Vaishnav. The 29th is to live in Mathura, the birthplace of Lord Krishna. And the 30th is to read Srimad Bhagavatam regularly. 31. One should perform all endeavors for Krishna. 32. One should look forward to His mercy. 33. One should partake of various ceremonies with devotees, ceremonies like Lord Krishna's birthday or Ramchandra's birthday. 34. One should surrender to Krishna in all respects. 35. One should observe particular vows like Kartik Vrata. These are some of the 64 important items of devotional service. One should associate with devotees, chant the holy name of the Lord, hear Srimad Bhagavatam, reside at Mathura, and worship the deity with faith and veneration. These five limbs of devotional service are the best of all. Even a slight performance of these five awakens love for Krishna. One should have full faith and love in worshipping the lotus feet of the deity. One should taste the meaning of Srimad Bhagavatam in the association of pure devotees, and one should associate with the devotees who are more advanced than oneself and endowed with a similar type of affection for the Lord. One should congregationally chant the holy name of the Lord and reside in Vrindavan. The power of these five principles is very wonderful and difficult to reconcile. Even without faith in them, a person who is offenseless can experience dormant love of Krishna simply by being a little connected with them. When one is firmly fixed in devotional service, whether he executes one or many processes of devotional service, the waves of love of Godhead will awaken. There are many devotees who execute only one of the nine processes of devotional service. Nonetheless, they get ultimate success. Devotees like Maharaj Ambarish execute all nine items and they also get ultimate success. Maharaj Pariksit attained the highest perfection, shelter at Lord Krishna's lotus feet simply by hearing about Lord Vishnu. Shukdev Goswami attained perfection simply by reciting Srimad Bhagavatam. Prahlad Maharaj attained perfection by remembering the Lord. The Goddess of Fortune attained perfection by massaging the transcendental legs of Mahavishnu. Maharaj Prithu attained perfection by worshipping the deity. And Akrura attained perfection by offering prayers unto the Lord. Vajrangaji or Hanuman attained perfection by rendering service to Lord Ramachandra, and Arjuna attained perfection simply by being Krishna's friend. Bali Maharaj attained perfection by dedicating everything to the lotus feet of Krishna. Maharaj Ambarish always engaged his mind at the lotus feet of Krishna, his words in describing the spiritual world and the Supreme Personality of Godhead his hands in cleansing and washing the Lord's temple, his ears in hearing topics about the Supreme Lord, his eyes in seeing the deity of Lord Krishna in the temple, his body in touching the lotus feet of Vaishnavas and embracing them, his nostrils in smelling the aroma of the Tulsi leaves offered to Krishna's lotus feet, his tongue in tasting food offered to Krishna, his legs in going to places of pilgrimage like Vrindavan and Mathura or to the Lord's temple, 
and his head in touching the lotus feet of the Lord and offering him prayers. Thus Maharaj Ambarish desired only to serve the Lord faithfully. In this way he engaged his senses in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. As a result, he awakened his dormant loving propensity for the Lord's service. If a person gives up all material desires and completely engages in the transcendental loving service of Krishna as enjoined in revealed scriptures, he is never indebted to demigods, sages, or forefathers. One who has given up all material desires and taken full shelter at the lotus feet of Mukunda, who gives shelter to all, is not indebted to the demigods, great sages, ordinary living beings, relatives, friends, mankind, or even one's forefathers who have passed away. Although the pure devotee does not follow all the regulative principles of Varnashram, he worships the lotus feet of Krishna. Therefore, he naturally has no tendency to commit sin. If, however, a devotee accidentally becomes involved in a sinful activity, Krishna purifies him. He does not have to undergo the regulative form of atonement. One who has given up everything and taken full shelter at the lotus feet of Hari, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is very dear to Krishna. If he is involved in some sinful activity by accident, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is seated within everyone's heart, removes his sins without difficulty. The path of speculative knowledge and renunciation is not very essential for devotional service. Indeed, good qualities such as non-violence and mind and sense control automatically accompany a devotee of Lord Krishna. As mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam, for one who is fully engaged in my devotional service, whose mind is fixed on me in bhakti yoga, the path of speculative knowledge and dry renunciation is not very beneficial. And in the Skanda Purana, the sage says, O hunter, good qualities like non-violence which you have developed are not very astonishing for those who are engaged in the Lord's devotional service are never inclined to give pain to others because of envy. My dear Sanatan, I have now in detail described devotional service according to the regulative principles. Now hear from me about spontaneous devotional service and its characteristics. The original inhabitants of Vrindavan are attached to Krishna spontaneously in devotional service. Nothing can compare to such spontaneous devotional service, which is called Ragatmika Bhakti. When a devotee follows in the footsteps of the devotees of Vrindavan, his devotional service is called Raganuga Bhakti. When one becomes attached to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his natural inclination to love is fully absorbed in thoughts of the Lord. That is called transcendental attachment, and devotional service according to that attachment is called ragatmika, or spontaneous devotional service. The primary characteristic of spontaneous love is deep attachment for the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Absorption in him is a marginal characteristic. Thus, devotional service, which consists of raga or deep attachment, is called ragatmika, spontaneous loving service. If a devotee covets such a position, he is considered to be most fortunate. If one follows in the footsteps of the inhabitants of Vrindavan out of such transcendental covetousness, he does not care for the injunctions or reasonings of Shastra. That is the way of spontaneous love. Devotional service in spontaneous love is vividly expressed and manifested by the inhabitants of Vrindavan. 
Devotional service that accords with their devotional service is called Raganuga Bhakti or devotional service following in the wake of spontaneous loving service. When an advanced realized devotee hears about the affairs of the devotees of Vrindavan in the mellows of Shanta, Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya and Madhurya, he becomes inclined in that way and his intelligence becomes attracted. Indeed, he begins to covet that particular type of devotion. When such covetousness is awakened, one's intelligence no longer depends on the instruction of Shastra, revealed scripture, logic, or argument. There are two processes by which one may execute this Raganuga Bhakti, external and internal. When self-realized, the advanced devotee externally remains like a neophyte and executes all the Shastric injunctions, especially hearing and chanting. However, within his mind, in his original purified self-realized position, he serves Krishna in Vrindavan in his particular way. He serves Krishna twenty-four hours all day and all night. The advanced devotee who is inclined to spontaneous loving service should follow the activities of a particular associate of Krishna in Vrindavan. He should execute service externally as a regulative devotee, as well as internally from his self-realized position. Thus he should perform devotional service both externally and internally. Actually, the inhabitants of Vrindavan are very dear to Krishna. If one wants to engage in spontaneous loving service, he must follow the inhabitants of Vrindavan and constantly engage in devotional service within his mind. The devotee should always think of Krishna within himself, and one should choose a very dear devotee who is a servitor of Krishna in Vrindavan. One should constantly engage in topics about that servitor and his loving relationship to Krishna, and one should live in Vrindavan. However, if one is physically unable to go to Vrindavan, he should mentally live there. Krishna has many types of devotees. Some are servants, some are friends, some are parents, and some are conjugal lovers. Those who are situated in one of these attitudes of spontaneous love, according to their choice, are considered to be on the path of spontaneous loving service. As sage Kapila Dev says to his mother in the Srimad Bhagavatam, My dear mother Devahuti, O emblem of peace, my weapon, the disk of time, never vanquishes those for whom I am very dear, for whom I am the super soul, the sun, friend, spiritual master, well-wisher, worshipable deity, and desired goal. Since the devotees are always attached to me, they are never vanquished by the agents of time. Let me offer my respectful obeisances again and again to those who always eagerly meditate upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead as a husband, son, friend, brother, father, or intimate friend. If one engages in spontaneous loving service to the Lord, his affection at the lotus feet of Krishna gradually increases. In the seed of affection there is attachment which goes by two names, Rati and Bhav. The Supreme Personality of Godhead comes under the control of such attachment. That by which one can attain loving service to the Lord I have described in detail as the execution of devotional service called Abhideya. My dear Sanatan, I have briefly described the process of devotional service in practice, which is the means for obtaining love of Krishna. It cannot be described broadly. Whoever hears the process of practical devotional service very soon attains shelter at the lotus feet of Krishna in love and affection. Praying at the lotus feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath, always desiring their mercy, I, Krishnadas, narrate Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita 
following in their footsteps. This ends chapter 22 of the Madhya Lila, the process of devotional service.